James Baker recommended Tillerson's appointment as Secretary of State. Baker held that position under President George H.W. Bush. He was also President Ronald Reagan's Treasury Secretary and White House Chief of Staff. He joins us from the Baker Institute at Rice University in Houston. Good morning, Secretary Baker. Good morning, Charlie. Delighted to see you or hear you. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and very, very pleased to know that you're back and, st and still pulling the sheet off your own face in the morning, just like, <laughs> just, just like I am. <laughs> well, we, that's a good way to put it. I tell you, Mr. Secretary, Gail and I are so happy to you to have him here. Yeah, that's right. It's good to and have I'm him. happy to be back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These two people on both sides of me will make you younger every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> so let's talk about the budget first. Uh, sure. The 26% the cut in the State Department budget, uh, all of that, some of that included uh, aid money, foreign aid. Um, you believe in diplomacy. Will this make diplomacy harder? Well, I don't think it will really in the, in the final analysis, uh, Charlie. I do believe in diplomacy, and I, do, I believe uh, that the State Department ought to have sufficient funds to conduct robust diplomacy for the country. Uh, but I got to tell you something, uh, as you indicated in your introduction to me, I also wore a Treasury hat for four years as Secretary of the Treasury, and the biggest threat facing this country today is that ticking fiscal debt bomb of ours. We have we have a debt to GDP today of uh, close to 100 percent. That's not sustainable for any country. So we're going to have to figure out ways to reduce that, to, re to cut our budget. Uh, you can't get the necessary cuts, of course, from discretionary spending right. like right. the, like the uh, uh, cutting the uh, discretionary programs of the federal government. Sooner or later, if you want to get the budget in balance, you're going to have to take on entitlements. That's difficult politically, but Ronald Reagan did it back in 1983. It can be done without political damage, and that's something ultimately uh, we're really going to have to do. Uh, Mr. Secretary, you are right. I mean, 40 percent of the budget is Social Security and Medicare, and Trump doesn't even touch that, which is why these cuts are so severe to the discretionary um, spending. Dan Balls of The Washington Post compared Trump's efforts to cut domestic spending to that of Ronald Reagan in 1981. You were his chief of staff there. Is that a fair comparison? It's a very fair comparison, absolutely fair. We got a lot of grief, if you remember back there. Well, you, you can't remember because you're not old enough, but <laughs> I, re I remember, and guess what? And guess what? Charlie Rose remembers <laughs> what, what happened back there. And it was, you know, we were, we were throwing, oh. widows, and, we were throwing widows and orphans, orphans out in the street. It was a horror show. Everything was going to go to hell in a handbasket. And it was going to be the end of Western civilization as we know it. Well, we found out that's really not correct. And we do have to take on those programs at some point. The, the bottom line, though, is, you know, you can't be strong uh, politically or diplomatically or militarily if you're not strong uh, economically. And that was what uh, really made this country the special country we are. And we've got to we've got to deal with this uh, ticking fiscal debt bomb. Uh, there'll be a lot of, uh, you know, these, uh, this is the president's budget. It's never enacted by the Congress. There's going to be a lot of changes to it. But it isn't the West, uh, uh, the end of Western civilization. Yeah, we let's talk about climate change, if you don't mind, Mr. Secretary, sure. because you met with White House officials last month to talk yeah. to them about ta tax carbon emissions as a way to fight climate change. It doesn't appear that they heard your message. What's your reaction to what they've done, how they've addressed well, that in the budget? Well, we didn't we didn't expect that they were going to jump on jump all over this. But look, this was this was portrayed as a carbon tax. That's really not uh, in sum and substance what it is. It's a carbon uh, it's a carbon levy uh, redemption program or or a dividend program. We return every dollar uh, that's collected to the American people, so it does not grow government. In that sense, it is not a tax. But it Mick Mulvaney said it, it, this. Mick Mulvaney said this. It, We're not spending it, money on that anymore. We consider that to be a waste. Well, he's talking about he's talking about programs that the Obama administration initiated, in which we uh, tried to convince other countries that climate change is real and that we that they need to address it. That's what he's talking about. This program of ours has never been implemented before. It's new. It's brand new. It's conservative. It's free market. It's limited government, and it's internationally competitive. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a different deal. Mm-hmm. Tillerson is making a, a three country tour. Uh, he will. Uh, he's been in Japan. It would be in Beijing and, and is going to right. South Korea. Right. Um, tell us what our options are with respect to North Korea, because he has said our strategic patience is over. Well, uh, it, it frankly should be over. Uh, there are no good options, uh, quite frankly. Uh, uh, the military option is fraught with uh, considerable risk and danger. Uh, North Korea has an incredibly large army poised just 30 miles from Seoul, the capital of South Korea. We have a security alliance with uh, South Korea and Japan, of course, which has frankly been the a basis of stability in the Pacific for a long, long time. That's a tough uh, option. Uh, if, if sanction, further sanctions, sanctions can work when they're multilateral. China is the key to that. If we could get China to come along with, with uh, uh, and support more robust sanctions, that would be perhaps one approach that might work. China does not want a, a nuclear Korean peninsula. They're, they're against that too, but they also don't want the collapse of the North Korean government and the influx of refugees that that, would, that problem would present to them. All right, Secretary Baker, you have had the best line of the morning, Charlie Rose taking the sheet off of his own face. I always wondered, was there somebody there with him? Now we know, it's Charlie Rose moving his own sheet. Thank you, thank you very much, Secretary Baker. It's always good to have you, always good to have you at the table, even by satellite. Thank you, sir. My pleasure.